Welcome to a world very much like your own. You'll find much of its history to be very familiar, but the events following the Second World War are where the paths diverge. In 1946, theoretical physicist Professor Albert Einstein was attached to a project operating out of Trinity Site in New Mexico. He was working on something called a paradox device. 20th of December, 1924. Well, if you had a time machine, what would you do? Einstein was returned to his own time. He couldn't change established events, but perhaps he could create a reality in which the terrible war never happened. Perhaps, but he would never know for certain if he had succeeded. Einstein's timeline ticked on. He had dreamed of peace, but there would always be conflict in the modern world. Let's take a look at the timeline that the interloper Einstein had affected. Without the rise of the Third Reich, Joseph Stalin looked west to an uncontested Europe. It came to him in a dream. Where the Romans failed, I will succeed. Russia's borders will stretch from coast to coast, for a united Russia is our destiny. Under his Soviet regime, he commanded a vast military, and despite his apparent instability, held absolute authority over the Soviet people. But Stalin's destiny was never in his own hands. Right at the offset, the Soviet war machine was bolstered by their already fearsome Tesla technology, while the Allied nations had to make do with what conventional forces they had to hand. The Allies could never win by force alone. And so it is that they turned to theoretical physicist Professor Albert Einstein. I'm late. I apologize. My watch is not working. This is not the same man we saw in Landsberg. In this timeline, a very different Second World War had only just begun, and Einstein was not the same stern, brusque man working at Trinity Site. This Einstein presents himself as a genial, absent minded optimist, three parts boffin to one part buffoon. The difference is stark. Give me the sequence calculations. Now! This is Professor Albert Einstein. Yes, yes. Very exciting. Crucially, the war that would inspire Einstein to invent a time machine had never happened. This may not be the same Einstein, but he is equally as capable, and though a man of peace, he offered the Allies his services. The Chronosphere project was initially tested at the Philadelphia Naval Shipyard to limited success. We made it disappear and reappear, <laughs> but with very little control. We lost some men. Having been developed by a different Einstein and under different circumstances, this space-time manipulation device, the Chronosphere, worked somewhat differently. Having no fine control over time, it was instead purposed for transportation of matter through space. The Chronosphere proved to be a watershed development for the Allies, allowing them to turn the tide against the Soviets. The technology, however, was experimental, and meddling with space-time could cause unpredictable effects. Using Einstein's technological breakthroughs, the Second World War was narrowly won by the Allies, following the disappearance of Stalin during the Siege of Moscow. In the aftermath, the victorious Allies elected for Russia Alexander Romanov, a career politician and apparent proponent for peace, as the new Premier of the Soviet Empire. Though he appeared to be the perfect ally to the West, Romanov secretly plotted revenge for the Soviet humiliation. Amassing technology to rival that of the Allies, this tension culminated in the 1972 Soviet invasion of America, igniting the Third World War. Here, the timelines diverge, depending entirely on the skill of each faction's commanders. On one possible path, New York fell to Soviet psychic beacons before the rest of the Allied nations could rally. These beacons were designed by a man known only as Yuri. A master of the psychic arts, Yuri may have been the man behind the entire war. He had been mind-controlling Premier Romanov for some time, and after forcing Romanov to promote Yuri to Supreme Commander, killed Romanov, 
and took control. His ruse was discovered before he was able to remove a particularly capable general, who in turn deposed the traitorous Yuri, toppled the Allied forces, and became Premier of the Global Soviet Empire. It would have been good to see inside your mind, General. I still may get the chance. Back in time. The preemptive attack by the Soviets sent the US reeling. Fearing they would be next, the European allies promised America support in return for removing Soviet nuclear silos from along the Polish border. With European assistance secured, the US gained access to Professor Albert Einstein, whose advanced technology once again gave the Allied forces the upper hand, allowing them to reclaim parts of the US and deploy Einstein's improved chronosphere. In a surprise attack, the chronosphere was used to transport a small task force into the unprepared heart of Moscow. Taking the Kremlin, the Allies secured victory. Here's where things get interesting. Yuri had been planning his betrayal for some time, and the Allies could not account for his whereabouts after the war. In a few moments, I will unleash a tidal wave of psychic energy designed to dominate the minds of an entire planet. There will be no more free will, only my will. With his own personal army, he had constructed a network of psychic dominators across the planet, and only a suicidal Harrier strike on his Alcatraz base kept both allies and Soviets in the game. This is my prototype temporal displacement device. I believe we can use it to transport your forces backwards in time. The Soviets caught wind of this new time machine and launched an assault on the Allies for its control. If the Soviets activate the time machine, they accidentally overclock it with too much power, sending their small contingent hurtling back in time to the Cretaceous period, over 65 million years ago. Quickly correcting this minor oversight, they jump forward to 1972, during the Third World War. A written note from Premier Romanov to himself allows this general from the future to take control of forces in the past. Then together, we take care of traitor Yuri! Although Yuri accelerated his plans, the Soviet's second chance allowed them to come out on top, defeating both the Allies and Yuri, leading to a planet-wide communist union, and soon, a glorious Soviet solar empire. But the time travel shenanigans didn't end there. At the close of the war, Yuri acquired the time machine, which the Soviets were able to remotely overcharge. What is that? Who is there? Let's backtrack. If the Allies activate the time machine, their task force would also have been sent back to the initial Soviet invasion of the US. Using their hindsight to declaw the Soviets, the Allies preempt Yuri's preemptive strike and eventually detain the psychic at his Antarctic base. <laughs> We've got a nice safe spot for him to live out his days. Professor Einstein calls it a psychic isolation chamber. He won't be able to mind control a fly. Inexplicably, the timeline then merges with the line from which it split. It is the two timelines, Lieutenant! They are merging! One series of events must take precedence over the other! The changes made to the past prevailed, saving those left behind by the time machine from an unthinkable future. Einstein's meddling may have worked out for the Allies, the Soviets not so much. The Premier is gone! Yes, the coward has already fled. The USSR is at death's door, comrade. In the aftermath of the conflict, the Union was in a desolate state. But deep beneath the Kremlin's heart, Soviet scientist Dr. Gregor Zelinsky was working on a secret project. No, 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 it isn't ready. It hasn't been tested. We don't even know if it works. If what works? My time machine. At the command of Colonel Shedenko, he, Zelensky, and General Krukov traveled back in time to save the Soviet Union.
Brussels, 1927. Only three years after the assassination at Landsberg, a much younger Einstein would meet the same fate. Each of the three time machines, being made by a different person, twisted time in a different way. Rather than returning the three meddlers to their old reality, Zelinsky's time machine instead followed the path of the new history. Without Einstein, the Allies lost their technological edge, but Europe had not fallen to the Soviets during the Second World War, because without Einstein, the Soviets' atom bombs had never been invented. For years, the two factions struggled against one another, the Soviets inching closer to, but never quite achieving, victory. This perpetual distraction of the two world forces allowed a third to grow unchecked. The technologically superior empire of the rising sun, with designs for their divine destiny. Between the lines, world domination. The Allies held a meek advantage, thanks to recent experimental developments by Amsterdam-based FutureTech, but ultimately the victory would go to the faction with the better commander. During the war, Dr. Zelinsky defected to the Allies. Thank you, you must listen to me, nothing is as it should be. His time machine was lost in the chaos, but he offered to work with FutureTech on refinements to their chronosphere. FutureTech seemed very invested in the manipulation of time, this is where the story ends. But there is another. A reality which split from this timeline long ago. But Stalin's destiny was never in his own hands. This is Cain, the messianic leader of the Brotherhood of Nod, an ancient secret religious organization. The extent of their global reach is worryingly unknown, but by the 1940s, Nod had infiltrated the Soviet Union, whispering words direct into Stalin's ear. The General Secretary was nothing more than a puppet for the Brotherhood. Thanks to Nod, the Soviets were able to sweep across Europe, dealing heavy blows to the Allied nations that would one day form the Global Defense Initiative. But once Stalin had outlived his usefulness, he was removed. <laughs> <laughs> Europe could rebuild, but without its head, the Soviet Union collapsed inward. The Brotherhood saw to that. Cain foresaw the coming of an alien crystal, which he named after the Roman Emperor Tiberius, a man whom perhaps he had met, and Nod made sure to set the world stage for its arrival. The victor of the Second World War was determined by Nod's interference within the Soviet Union. Schrodinger's cane likely existed, if indeed he ever did exist, for thousands of years before. But either way, the timelines would be drawn inexorably here, to the moment the original Einstein appeared in Landsberg. This is the moment we open the box and observe the cat. If Kane does not exist, the Allies win and the timeline bends towards a Cold War turned hot. If Cain does exist, the timeline follows another path. Whatever event in history that gave him prophetic knowledge of Tiberium and placed him in the Skrin data core, set in motion the forthcoming Tiberium seeding of Earth, which would transform our cradle of life into an unrecognizable alien world. A war on terror. A battle of ideology and a struggle against extinction. Three disparate worlds, and at the crossroads of fate, one man and his time machine. Time will tell. My name is Stefan. Sooner or later. Thank you so much for watching. Time will tell.